Hi, and welcome to another edition of the vegan. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sherry and welcome to another edition of the Vegan Boomer Babe, where it is never too late to go vegan. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about kitchen tools, um, the top 12 essential tools for a vegan kitchen. Um, I have always been a big believer that having the right tool for the right job is really important and that is no different in your kitchen. So um, today I'm going to show you my top 12 tools. And I'm gonna start with my, my tofu press. So um, I've noticed that a lot of uh, vegan chefs don't use tofu presses. They put it in, you know, put books and pots and pans on top. Um, I often wonder why, because I love my tofu press. Um, this tofu press, I got it on Amazon. And the beautiful thing about it, um, I do have, I'm gonna show you just how I use this. The nice thing about this particular press is that it is, it will hold two blocks of tofu. So I do often make two blocks of tofu. So I already drained the water out of this package and I have a block of tofu here. And typically what I do is I just, just dry it just a little bit. Um, there is a little indent, a little, uh, I'm gonna turn these little screws up, push it in here. Um, if I'm putting one block of tofu in, I will put it this direction. If I'm doing two blocks of tofu, I'll put them side by side. Already, there we go. But there we go. And then you just screw it down. Now, if you are using crumbled tofu, it doesn't matter how hard you put this down to drain it, but you really should do it kind of gently so you don't break up the tofu. Now it is squeezing, even though it doesn't really look like it. What I normally do is I will set it over on the side of the sink, put something on the end there, and I will squeeze it until I just start to see some water coming out of it. And um, basically that's all I do. And there we have it, a tofu press. So um, I usually let it press for maybe 15 minutes. This is extra firm tofu, so it's not super important that you really, um, really press it too, mo too long. But um, anyway, that's my favorite number one tool. Um, my other probably runner up for number one would be my air fryer. Now I am not one to have a lot of kitchen gadgets. Um, I love a tool, but um, when air fryers first came out, I have to say I was very skeptical about them. In fact, I bought a, an air fryer and I didn't really use it um, that much. I used it once or twice and I thought, mm, this is okay. But the reason I didn't like my other air fryer is because I bought one with the, a small basket. So, this is, this is an Instant Pot um, air fryer, and this has a nice big basket. Uh, my other one had a small basket, so I was always putting batches, and I didn't like cooking in batches. So this is nice because it has a nice big basket. Um, I use my air fryer five days a week. I use it a lot. I love air fried tofu. Um, tempeh, Light Life makes a um, smoky bacon tempeh. Um, that is fabulous in the air fryer. Uh, any of the Gardein products um, that you might, uh, we love the ultimate chicken patties. So they are fabulous in the air fryer. Um, I just made some air fried um, mushrooms. So you can air fry just about anything and it is just I think it is a must have in your kitchen. So number two, I'm going to say my air fryer. Um, my third or my next one 
is my food chopper. Um, you often hear me refer to my food chopper. I've been using a food chopper. This food chopper is a Pampered Chef food chopper. And I have to say a lot of, a lot of my favorite tools are some old Pampered Chef tools that are maybe 25, 30 years old. So this food chopper, I think this is my third food chopper because I use it so often that in the past 20 years, it has, um, it has worn out. Um, so this is my third one. I'm gonna just pull out a quick. So you simply put whatever you wanna chop on a cutting board and it chops it up. I love it for parsley, cilantro, onions, especially if you want them fine. Chopped garlic, it is perfect for chopped garlic. Um, I, just, I just use this for everything, it's fast. So if you, um, are, you know, want some chopped onions, I usually like chopped onions large and you can chop things it's not quite as i like it more for finely chopped um, if something is a, a large chopped onion i will usually do it by hand but if you want fine chopped this is fast easy and quick my next one uh, my, my next tool number four um, this is also an old pampered chef tool this is a xylus cheese grater um, and one of my favorite cheeses as a vegan is the BioLife Parmesan. And it does come grated, but I love it freshly grated, just like I used to love um, freshly grated Parmesan prior to going vegan. So what I do is I just simply put a piece of cheese into this grater, just like the Olive Garden. Um, yeah, this is the cheese grater, and it just gives you freshly grated cheese. You could also put chocolate in here. So if um, the dairy-free chocolate chips, if you wanted to just put some finely grated chocolate on top of a dessert, you could use this as well. Even nuts, if you wanted to have a fine uh, grind of a nut. So my cheese grater, one of my favorites. Number four, I think this is, I'm losing count now. Number five. A pair of kitchen scissors. I use kitchen scissors when I'm cutting up. I'll put herbs in a bowl and just chop them up, um, cutting open pitas. Even if you're cooking with uh, maybe some dough and you wanna cut some slivers in it, I use kitchen scissors instead of a knife a lot. So this is a great thing to have in your kitchen as well. Number six my garlic press. Um, this garlic press is probably 25 years old. And this is a Pampered Chef again. Um, yay, Pampered Chef. <laughs> um, this is a Xylus garlic press. And you simply put the, you don't have to peel the garlic for this press. I do anyway. Um, but you just simply put it in. You typically, I use a knife to just scrape it off to get all of the minced garlic into my dish. If I wanted chopped garlic, which sometimes you might like a chopped garlic, you know, minced garlic gets a little more intense flavor. Chopped garlic is a little bit milder. I will use my food chopper for chopped garlic, my garlic press for minced garlic. So, um, number seven, uh, you know, I have, my citrus juicer here. I love this citrus juicer. I, I've only been using this for about a year, so shame on me if I didn't know about it sooner because this is a great tool. So, you know, I should mention knives. I'm not a big, I mean, I shouldn't say that I'm not a big knife person, but I don't use big knives too often. I should, but I'm not the best knife person. So, um, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, so with this lime, there is on this particular one, you can put a lime in the green one or a lemon in the yellow one. You put it in with the lime facing down and then you squeeze it into this bowl and it is amazing how much lime juice comes out with this lime juice presser or citrus juice presser. So I just love this tool. I think it's great. 
Um, I probably should have used uh, number eight is my lemon or lime zester microplane. Probably should have demonstrated this one first because I only have a half of a lime now. But um, this is great because you can get the zest. Now when you're using the zest of a lemon or a lime, you don't want to go too far down. You only want to use the outer brightly colored part because once you start going down too deep, it is not as flavorful. So this makes a really fine zest. Um, it's super sharp, so be very careful with it. But, um, but I just love that because zest, whether it's lemon or lime, gives such a fabulous flavor. And you don't really need a whole lot of it to really make an, a huge impact on your dish. So if you have a recipe that calls for lemon or lime zest, I wouldn't skip it. I would get one of those lime zesters or lemon zesters and put it in there because you'll be glad you did. Um, number nine. So number nine is going to be two things. You often see me use my baking stone. Again, Pamper Chef. Um, this baking stone is probably 20, 25 years old, um, which is why it's black. It comes when, when you buy a, a new baking stone, it is a terracotta color. And over time, it just gets seasoned. And I just love this for everything. I put potatoes, vegetables, anything on this stone. But you have to be careful when you're using a baking stone because it has no rim. So if you are using something that has a lot of olive oil, it could run off. So be, be aware of that. So as a tie for number nine, I have my baking sheets. Um, this is a Nordic Ware um, natural aluminum commercial baker's half sheet. And I got a package of two of them for like $25. One of the best investments I ever made. These sheets are beautiful. Um, you know, sometimes you see baking sheets that get all nasty looking. Um, this looks beautiful and I use it all the time. It cleans up easily. I do use parchment paper on this when I am um, using it. But um, even when it's comes off of parchment paper if like some of the vegetables spill over it's so simple to clean so sometimes you know speaking of simple to clean that's really important with a kitchen tool if it is difficult to clean you are not so inclined to use it i'm not so inclined to use it so when something is clean speaking of which the baking stone you never use soap on it you just really kind of scrape what's off you know, scrape the crumbs off and dry it and put it away. So um, baking stone, good baking sheets. Um, number 10. Number 10 is a huge mixing bowl. This is an eight and a half quart mixing bowl. And I probably, again, I've been vegan for two and a half years. Um, and I bought this maybe a year ago and I am wondering where this was all my life. Um, it's so nice to have a big bowl that you can just, if I'm roasting vegetables, I can fill it up pretty, I mean, it's hard to fill this up. And when you're stirring things around, um, it really does keep them in the bowl because it's so big. Um, you know, that just reminds me of another Another favorite, I'm just gonna kind of throw this in. This was not in my original thought, but this is a spatula spoon. And this, along with my giant bowl, this is a favorite combo. So, um, love this bowl. Um, number 11 is a food processor. So, I was never a huge food processor uh, person before. Um, but when you are, and any brand, I, I don't know, I don't have an expensive food processor. Um, I use it if I'm going to be shredding cabbage or if I'm going to be making ricotta cheese out of uh, almonds. So food processor, definitely a must have. And number 12, number 12 is 
I'm going to say number 12 is my Vitamix. Um, my Vitamix is a wonderful tool. Um, if it, it's, it's kind of expensive and I hesitated for a long time to invest in a Vitamix, but um, a lot of, I, I know some people just use their Vitamix for smoothies, but this is so much better than just for smoothies. I make um, vegan cheeses in here. You can make soups in here. Actually, when you turn this on, it heats the soup. So when it, not only does it chop everything up and blend it together, it heats it which is amazing. So um, love, love, love this. Um, if you're making cheese sauces, as I mentioned, a lot of vegan cheese sauces that you make um, at home are made from cashews or almonds. Um, so you need a high powered um, blender to make it nice and smooth. You don't want gritty. So. Um, you can, I also have a Nutribullet, not my favorite for making, I, I think the, the Vitamix is really better for cutting, you know, for chopping up things like cashews, but um, much cheaper than Nutribullet. So, um, but, so some sort of a, of a, of a um, blender is a must. So with, uh, with a vegan kitchen. So, so there we have it, our top 12 essential tools in a vegan kitchen. Um, you know, it's again, having the right tool for the right job makes it much easier when you are preparing some food. Um, and if it can speed it up and make your life easier, it's great having, um, having these tools to work with. So, Thanks for joining me today. Um, it was great to chat with you and um, I will see you next time in my kitchen. And remember, it's never too late to go vegan. Thanks.